Hi everyone, yeah, Tristan here, and I'm sitting with Dan. We've been the project leads on the for Kutumba within this program. And as I alluded to in one of those videos, we decided to focus on natural building and rainwater harvesting. And the reason was that the needs that we were uh, looking to meet were first was infrastructure. Uh, we had limited infrastructure, um, and the others is financial because we wanted to create a more financially resilient system within the learning center that wouldn't just be reliant on uh, parent school fees. So in creating a space that we could hire out for events and workshops and also bring people in for different learning experiences, uh, we realized that building like an outdoor space would be really beneficial within that, as well as doing the rainwater harvesting, uh, which felt like the, the, the smaller piece because it was something we knew how to do. So I think the major challenge that we faced was sort of time and capacity because <clears throat> we're quite a small community. We're completely community run. It's just parents who sort of muck in and get involved and <clears throat> we're busy um, creating things. And last year, we also had uh, sort of uh, unexpected surprise when our facilitator needed to leave quite uh, at short notice. And so then the parents were filling in as facilitators and keeping the center running, which really drew on our capacity to continue to build things forward. Um, you know, I think also just because we were such a young project, we only opened at the beginning of last year. So yeah, we were figuring things out as we went along and, and that included the actual building process. None of us had actually built a structure like this before. So. The rainwater harvesting was pretty straightforward, but we had to figure out the building as we went along. Um, Dan had many sleepless nights uh, figuring things out. And in the end, we just took it sort of one step at a time and, and we kind of got there. I think the, the really positive surprise we had towards the end was that uh, we were trying to figure out what roof we would be able to, to put in. And uh, the founder of Kutumba Eco Village stepped forward sort of the, at the last minute and said, hey, I can assist you with additional funding so that you can build the roof that you really want, which meant that we were able to put in a tin roof, which means we can catch water off of that. Uh, and also just from an ecological perspective, that was much better than the other options we were we were looking at. So, yeah, that was really beneficial. And I think, yeah, we also just in some ways surprised ourselves. I think we we, we ended up with a structure that feels uh, really solid and also kind of elegant and beautiful. Uh, you can't really see in the picture, but it's in the shape of a hexagon. And, you know, when you're inside it, it has a certain feel that's uh, it, it feels really good. And, yeah, we're just we're just getting started as well in some ways because we still have more to add, which I'll speak to just now. Um, yeah, I think how we got there was kind of like how you eat an elephant, uh, one bite at a time. Uh, at times, different parts of the project just took longer than we expected because we we're figuring things out anew. And yeah, we sort of had a, a fear that we wouldn't actually get a roof up by the end of the project. But just by taking one step at a time, we we managed to get there. And I think, yeah, the, the beautiful thing was it just took lots of hands. You know, we had so many community work days on weekends. Um, people would pull in for the morning and we would just, you know, get something done, whether it was building, but also improving the space around uh, the existing ranger's hut and creating new things for the kids, which was really fun. I think uh, that allowed the kids to get involved more as well, uh, because the building itself was quite uh, physical up until this point, you know, heavy poles and um, lots of lifting and things like that. And it's exciting that the kids will get more and more involved as we move into the sort of natural building element of it. Um, for now, though, we've got, you know, some shade and shelter for the kids in the outdoor space, and they're using that for different means, whether it's uh, running a little like uh, bicycle maintenance workshops, or now that it's starting to get cooler, they've had a few fires under there, which is quite fun. And we've already started to generate a little bit of income from hosting events in the space, which has been, you know, has really helped actually at this particular time. Uh, and that's only likely to grow. So I think the other impact that's worth speaking to was that when we were going through these challenges last year, the fact that we were part of this program that really spoke to the bigger picture and the bigger vision that we hold for the learning center, it helps to kind of anchor us in what we were doing and give us the belief that you know, we're, it's worth doing and we can keep going. And so that was a big, a big impact. Um, yeah, and long term, those opportunities for hosting events are only going to grow. You know, one of the things we would love to do is host unschooling camps for other self-directed learners who live in the cities, whether it's in Cape Town or Johannesburg, so that they can, can come out, they can camp. Our kids can have engagement with a broader pool of, of other kids who, you know, are signed up to the same sort of uh, learning journey as them. Uh, the adults can engage and share their knowledge and experience of, of guiding self-directed learning. Uh, and at the same time, you know, we can earn a little bit of income and from hosting people. So just these different um, sort of multifaceted impacts uh, that we've really got the opportunity for going forward. Uh, in terms of moving forward, we still want to build um, uh, clay walls on you know, three sides of the structure so that we can have some counter space, we can maybe have some seating space, and we also want to build a pizza oven just to really enhance the space and have different opportunities for different kinds of gatherings. And yeah, I think that um, as we host more events, we'll have more and more ideas of what the space can be used for. 
I think the other thing that it's given us is a, a sense that the impact is growing beyond us now. I think when we hosted the annual general meeting for Kutumba last month, it was quite refreshing because I think within the parent group, we have a group of people who came to Kutumba for intentional community. We, we were an, an intentional community that formed elsewhere and decided to move to Kutumba. Uh, and so we've been operating within that cooperative or collaborative structure. And then there are other people who've moved to Kutumba because it's a beautiful place, it's very safe, it's very quiet, and they weren't necessarily looking for that community. But so much of the feedback at the AGM was that people are excited for that now. And the fact that we've come together and collaborated to create what we have at the Learning Center is creating that ripple in terms of what other people are excited about now within the community. And I think the potential for that going forward is even greater because, you know, one thing we would really love to do is um, start hosting events and workshops for people in our broader area, maybe from uh, lower socioeconomic um, levels, so that we can provide upliftment and upskilling for people in our area. So, yeah, that's what we're excited. Those are some of the things we're excited for going forward. Thanks so much.